Car booster seats are getting safer, but many still fail to protect your children. Tonight, we've obtained the National Safety Research Group's list of the safest and worst booster seats. Iowa to Susan Porter, Susan Hogan joins us now with the details that are new at five. Bottom line, it all comes down to just how well the seat belt fits a child in a booster. After this latest round of testing, there's no doubt parents have many more good choices than ever before. There's no dispute that booster seats help to save lives. But children secured improperly in a booster can make a critical and deadly difference. In a new guide for parents, the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety tested the seatbelt fit of 72 models available. The booster's job is to help the belts fit kids well. And our evaluations look at how well booster seats do that. Giving a best bet rating to 21 boosters that provided a correct fit for seat belts across the lap and shoulder. These are the top five. The worst performers are ones the Institute doesn't recommend because they do a poor job of fitting seat belts. A good booster is one that roots the lap belt across the child's upper thighs and positions the shoulder belt at mid-shoulder. A poor belt fit is too high on the abdomen and the shoulder belt is too close to the neck. This is the Evenflow Generation 65. It's one of the boosters we don't recommend. The main problem is the lap belt is too high in the stomach. Another issue is that the shoulder belt is too close to the neck, where it will cause comfort issues. The child's liable to wriggle out so that the belt won't be in position to protect him in a crash. And unlike the top performers, parents really cannot assume boosters in the in-between group will work in every family vehicle, so some may be fine, but parents, you really need to try them out to see if the seatbelt fits correctly. And to see the entire list of the performances of booster seats, just go to WPRI.com. I'm Susan Hogan, Eyewitness News.